Crime hurts, so justice should heal. That's the philosophy behind restorative justice, a novel and Christ-like way to approach criminal justice and conflict resolution. To learn how the method is being employed in Chicago schools and communities, we welcome Father Larry Dowling, pastor of St. Agatha's Church and St. Agatha's Academy in Chicago's North Lawndale community. Father Dowling is also a congregational organizer with the Community Renewal Society. And we welcome Kian Mays Lenoir, a 17-year-old Christ the King Jesuit College Prep School student and a member of First Baptist Congregational Church. And we welcome Brian Harris, a 14-year-old Lane Tech College Prep High School student and a member of Community Renewal Society's Faith in Action team. Brian attends Kingdom Baptist Church on the West Side. Thank you all for joining us. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank Good you. to be with you. And Father Dowling, let's talk a little bit, maybe you can start out and explain what restorative justice is all about. So restorative justice is a, is a practice that uh, uh, brings uh, all of those involved in conflict together to resolve that conflict in a peaceful way where there's, uh, there's discussion around what, uh, you know, where the conflict arises from. Oftentimes, not necessarily, you know, the roots of the conflict are, ne are not necessarily what actually is happening uh, and, and what is being stated in the conflict. So it's an opportunity for all of the parties who are involved to come together and to uh, share, you know, what is going on in the midst of that and then to come to re some resolution that restores them hopefully back to the situations that uh, they, uh, you know, we're in. So, for example, with schools, you know, if you're, there's conflict in school, bringing students, maybe the teachers together, uh, maybe the parents together, and then uh, in the midst of all of that, that group talking out uh, the conflict, and, and so that the students can enter back into the classroom and continue to, to learn. This isn't really a new concept. It's not. It's uh, it's been around. I mean, it, it, it has its roots in uh, you know Native American culture and and uh, in African culture and uh, uh, so. But it's relatively new in terms of uh, you know the the practices that are really being encouraged. Uh, we've had a prison system that is has been pretty much about retribution rather than rehabilitation. And uh, and uh, I think there are a lot of people that are realizing that we've got to do better by you know by everyone in the midst of this. And so uh, restorative justice is just a great way to uh, to approach that. And so how is the Community Renewal Society in implementing this? So we, we, are, uh, we are in the process of, uh, of uh, trying to form uh, uh, peace hubs. Uh, and uh, and, the, root, uh, and, and the, the core of the peace hub is really uh, uh, building these restorative justice practices. So one of those practices is, is uh, what are called peacemaking circles. Uh, peacemaking circles are an opportunity for people to come together to, uh, in, in an equal place as Christians, we say a, in a sacred place uh, where they can share, uh, okay. where there are four uh, basic values that people share in the midst of, and that is that uh, it is confidential within the circle, that uh, it is uh, that everyone listens to the person that is speaking, uh, that is respectful, and that it is non judgmental. And Kian, as a high school senior, how are you involved in restorative justice? Well, my church is part of CRS, and they asked me to do a speech about gun violence and gang violence in Chicago. After that, I joined a social justice club at my school, and we put on a very successful event called the Peace Tournament. And we teamed up with um, former NBA star Isaiah and it was basically we brought together ex-gang members and current gang members to play scrimmages of basketball against each other. And we basically showed the community that if they can get together to play basketball with one another, that they can also get together and be in, un in unity with one another. So that was a really big thing. Brian, tell me a little bit about your involvement in this and what's the Faith Action Team? So Faith and Action Teams are teams within the churches of about five to 15 people who work together to think of issues in the community that they have and what they can do to fix them. And so I worked with my Faith and Action Team with my church and what we've done, we've uh, worked with the community to find issues, you know, based on violence and with the youth and um, providing programs for the youth to have after school so they won't have to turn to violence. And we've um, traveled to Springfield to talk to legislators about sealing the records for nonviolent offenders so that they are able to have job opportunities and not only have them, but to receive them as well. How do the youth respond to this? Are they pretty open with you in talking about these conflicts? Yes, I believe that the youth are very open because sometimes most of the youth, they don't have that type of guidance at home from parents, so they look to it. So when you have someone who's very young and they need that guidance, they're very open and 
willing to take your understanding and your leadership because they only want to make themselves better. And do you see some kind of resolution in a lot of these cases? Yes, um, especially I have one friend, I won't list their name, but um, he has been struggling with bullying. And so being able to have someone to talk to, um, to help them with strategies to solve this, he has become a greater person mm -hmm. with more confidence in things. That's great. And have you seen the same thing, Kian, in your community? Can you think of any kind of conflicts that you've helped to resolve? Um, well, in my school, I am a peer minister, which basically means a peer mentor. So a lot of students come to me about their conflicts and their struggles. And the team, the other team I have with peer ministers, we all try to get together to figure out what was the core of that conflict and to solve it before it increases or worsens. And in that sense, it's a very successful thing because so, like what he mentioned before, a lot of kids are able to relate with other kids. It's hard for a child to go to an adult and it, it really tell the real issue and the real problem. So when they come to us, we're able to solve it and also help them on an individual growth and help them grow from whatever issue they had. How important do you think that this kind of resolution and conflict resolution is in, in the schools that we have today and in today's society? I, I think it's essential that this become a part of, you know, of every school, uh, that uh, you know, we find ways to, uh, you know, to teach uh, our children and teach our teachers and teach administration and everyone that works with the kids, including you know, counselors, uh, cafeteria workers, all, of the, all, all sorts of different people on, you know, on, on conflict resolution and, and how to solve conflict uh, peaceably. Uh, so, uh, you know, so to set up within schools, you know, peace rooms where uh, it's a natural thing for students when they, when there's conflict that happens to say, we need to go to the peace room or, you know, to say to their teacher, we need to go to the peace room and, uh, and the person who is, you know, in, in charge of that would, uh, you know, would help resolve, would help resolve the conflict. If we can do more and more of this, I think, you know, it, to create peaceable schools, it, it clearly makes it a lot easier for teachers to teach and children to learn, uh, and I think it's just a really key part. Plus, so much of this, if we teach it to our children in the school, uh, I have found carries over into the home because uh, especially teenagers will take some of these uh, strategies home with them, and when there's conflict at home, they will say, uh, you know, there's a different way to solve this, you know, that I learned at school. And Brian, what personally have you learned from working with this, with restorative justice and the Community Renewal Society? Well, with CRS and restorative justice, I've learned that there is a way out of no way when you, there feels like there's no hope. And especially with working with teens within my church, I've seen it happen constantly every day. Oh, I, I have a problem with a friend, I'm being bullied, or I feel unsafe going to school. With restorative justice, you know, there's someone there to help you in uh, the midst of that. And I feel like personally, it's a, it's a great way to solve problems, unlike violence. And Kian, your personal take on your involvement with CRS. When I gave the speech to in front of Illinois congressmen and House Representatives, one of my main things in the speech was that it's sad that me and my friends already planned our funerals. Mm -hmm. And um, if restorative justice was in the communities, majority of the youth won't, would not result to shooting or gang violence because that conflict would have been ceased right then and there and also they would have someone to go to. I know a lot of people that don't have someone to go to and that also raised up personal anger or personal aggression that will lead to that bigger conflict that causes someone dying or some, some mother bearing in their child. Father Dowling, Kian, and Brian, thank you so much for bringing this message of hope and reconciliation. We appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm Anne-Marie Gerhardt for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.